Alright, to give you retards another part of this spectacular but late upload that I forgot to do like several months ago, we are going to listen to Rosalina's story. Can't get ready for this one. This one is definitely going to be a pretty good one. She actually just said, let us begin. Indeed, let us begin. Let's read this. Alright, as a little bedtime story, in case you guys want, I'll read this to you. Chapter 3, The Comet. A beam of light pierced through the ship's window, thinking it was the morning sun. The girl peered through the window, only to find a turquoise blue comet shimmering at her. The little girl shook the sleeping Luma awake and shouted excitedly, We have to get that comet! The pair descended on the comet and found that it was made of ice. They looked high and low, but Luma's mother was nowhere to be found. Oh shit. Exhausted, the little girl sat down with a flop, utter, utterly unable to take another step. Look! Peering down at the icy ground where Luma was pointing, the girl suddenly noticed clusters of blue star bits encased in the ice. Pretty girl, pretty good, huh? Finding star bits is my specialty, said Luma, beaming. The I there's ice here, but it's so warm. I'll bet there's water here, too. The two decided to stay on the comet for a while. Riding the turquoise comet, the pair continued their search for Luma's mother. Chapter 4. The Dream One night, the girl dreamed about her own mother. Where are you going? She asked her mother, retreated back. Without turning, her mother replied, Don't fret, dearest. I'm not going anywhere. I'm always watching over you. Like the sun in the day and the moon in the night. A wave of sadness washed the girl, washed over the girl. What about when it rains and I can't see the sun or the moon? Her mother thought for a moment before responding. I will turn into a star in the clouds and wait for your tears to dry. When she awoke, the girl's face was damp with tears. You have star bits in your eyes, said, L said Luma to the girl. Wiping her face, the girl replied, These are tears, not star bits. I'm crying because I'll never see my mother ever again. At this, Luma began to cry too. Mama? Oh, Mama. Wah! The pair traveled through the starry skies, and, through, and though they encountered many comets, not one of them held Luma's mother. Luma was despondent. Now, now, Luma, the rain clouds won't go away if you keep crying, the girl said, giving Luma a squeeze. I'll give you a present if you stop. The girl closed her eyes and said gently, I'll take care of you. With these words, she felt a small spark in her heart. Chapter 5 Home The kitchen will go over here, and the library will go over there, the girl said busily to herself. We'll put the gate here. Ever since the girl took Luma under her care, 
She has been bustling about her feverish pace. It's a lot of work, but it's worth it to make a happy home. It turned out that star bits weren't the only things buried in the ice. There were tools and furniture unlike any they had ever seen, and the girl used them to build a home. Looking at the completed house, Luma remarked, Don't you think it's awfully big for just the two of us? With a library, bedroom, kitchen, fountain, and gate, it was certainly spacious. But still, something seemed to be missing. If only my father, brother, and mother were here, the girl said wishfully. Indeed, the house was too large for its, for its two small residents. That night, clutching her favorite stuffed bunny close to her heart, the girl fell asleep in the starship. Chapter 6 Friends Then one day, while the girl sat sipping tea, a tiny apricot-colored planet appeared on the horizon. From the planet, another Luma the same color, color emerged. Do you know each other? The girl asked the two Lumas gleefully. Despite the girl's excitement, they seemed unease, uneasy. The two Lumas neither drew closer nor backed away from each other. Instead, they stared. Then, one Luma broke the silence. at Mama. At once, the Apricot Luma parodied back. My Mama! My Mama! My Mama! My Mama! The two Lumas began to dance around the girl frantically, and neither showed any signs of stopping. The girl was charmed by this adorable scene that she couldn't help but laugh. And that's when something very strange happened. Suddenly, more Lumas began to pop out of the, of the apricot planet. They were different colors, but they all shouted the same thing. My mama! My mama! The sight of all the shouting Lumas only made the girl laugh harder. What am I going to do with all these children? These Lumas just stared blankly as she doubled over laughter. I guess we'll have to name each one of you a, a few. Tomorrow, once she had finished naming all of them all, she would begin moving all the Lumas into the new house. Chapter 7 The Telescope After seeing their 100th comet, a sudden thought popped into the girl's head. I wonder if my home planet is still blue, as blue as it was. That's when she remembered her father's telescope. Peeking into the telescope, a tiny blue dot floated into sight. It was smaller than a star bit. How strange! It seems so far away! But it feels so close. She twisted the knob of the telescope, and the blue dot grew until she could see out a grassy hill dotted with flowers. It seemed very familiar to her. Zooming even closer, a terrace on the hill came into view. I used to go stargazing there when I was lived with m on my home planet. She remembered rubbing the, rubbing the sleep out of her eyes as she followed her father up to the hill to look at the stars. She remembered how she and her brother would sled down that hill. She remembered having picnics with her mother 
on that hill on bright and windy days. And... I want to go home! I want to go home right now! The girl bursts into tears, and the Lumas didn't know what to do. I want to go home! I want to go back to my house by the hill! I want to see my mother! The girl was shouting now, her face wet with tears. But I know she's not there. I knew all along that she wasn't there in the sky because... Because... She's sleeping under the tree on the hill. The girl cries, the girl's cry echoed through the stars, and a hush fell over the area. Chapter 8 The Wish Though usually quite cheery, one day the girl became sad again. Luma drew closer and tried to comfort her. Mama, you still have me. And don't be sad about your mama because she's a part of you. That means she's always close by. It's like me. I love Starbits because they remind me of my mama. No! No! The girl said, unable to stop the tears. A lonely look flickered across Luma's face, but it was soon replaced by a wide grin. I have an idea! I will transform into a comet, a soaring comet that can carry you all over this journey. With that, Luma trailing bands of white, soaring high into the sky and just quickly started to plummet back down. Kaboom! Kabam! The ground shook, and a bright light poured out of the crater that Luma had created. The bands of light twisted together to form a comet tail. And then Luma emerged, reborn as a comet. The girl could scarcely believe her eyes. But how? She kept asking. Our destiny as Lumas is to transform into different things, said a, said a red Luma who had suddenly appeared. Stars, comets, planets, we could become all of these things. When I grow up, I want to be a star that makes someone special smile, said a green Luma. A blue Luma chimed in. That Luma turned into a real cutie of a comet, didn't he? All of them Luma all of the Lumas together said, No more crying, Mama. Thank you, said the girl in, in a whisper, and she pulled the Lumas close and hugged them. From that day on, Starbits no longer fell from the girl's eyes. The comet set forth for the girl's home planet, its long tail blazing proudly behind it. Final Chapter Family With its many lumas and telescopes, the comet was quite a sight to behold. The girl and the lumas were proud to call it home. As a welcoming party for a new luma, the girl gathered everyone in the kitchen and said in a louder voice than usual, All right, everyone, let's make a cake. A cake sprinkled with star bits. Then it will be a star cake. The Lumas excitedly began to gather in the ingredients. As she watched the Lumas scurry about, the girl smiled and thought to herself, This is my family now, and I will stay with them until they're ready to leave the nest. And when they and when they do leave, I'll see them off with a smile. Because that's what makes a mother happiest. 
That night, when the girl lay down to sleep, a soft light enveloped her, enveloped her, and reminded her of the blue planet she once called home. But it would be nice to return home every once in a while, every once every one hundred years to nap in my favorite sleeping nook. The comet carried carrying the Lumas, and the girl continued on its journey to, to this very day with more family members in tow than can be counted. It's said that the comet visits the girl's home planet once every hundred years, and its proud white tail glittered in the sky, glittering. The End That's all. My story is finished. Sweet dreams.